It's a verb I just made up. Um, I'm super excited about these two guests. Um, one of them I've been trying to get for years, and one I'm very happy is coming as well. Boy, that was a terrible introduction. Let's start that again. I am super psyched to introduce Propagate's Ben Silverman and Apple's Eddie Q. Come on out, guys. Hey, we'll put you in the middle. Thanks, Thanks. Eddie. Appreciate it. So we're not starting the live stream, so no one saw me butcher that introduction, so we're, we're good. <laughs> we weren't going to ask you which one was which, but... I've been trying, my wife went to college with Ben, so it's been my <laughs> lifelong dream to have Ben back on stage. So thank, thank you, Ben. And I see you brought back the dot picture, so I'm very happy about that. Those are the new version of the dot picture. Um, so we got both of you guys on stage here. We should explain why you're both here. You want to you you start, Ben? Well, um, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here because we are producing Planet of the Apps with Apple uh, for Apple Music and super excited about uh, the opportunity that Eddie's given us. And, Jimmy and the team at uh, Apple have been awesome partners, and I will do whatever they want me to do. For the handful <laughs> of people here who, who don't know what Planet of the Apps is, this is Apple's first television show. It's, uh, we've got two shows we've announced, Carpool Karaoke and Planet of the Apps, uh, coming for, uh, to Apple Music in the next few months. So, Eddie, everyone, I write the story yearly. Everyone writes the story monthly, yearly. When is Apple going to get into X business? When is Apple going to make movies? When is Apple going to make television? now you're making television. This, this won't appear on TV, right? I mean, where, where will I be able to see this show? You'll be able to see it on Apple Music. Uh, it won't be on, on television. It'll premiere and, and be uh, an exclusive to Apple Music. So you've been playing around, you've made some videos, you've, you've helped Drake and folks like that make videos that are exclusive for Apple Music. Why make a full-fledged television show? Um, look, we, we've, the thing about us, we've been working with television for a long time. We will continue to work with television partners for a long time. Um, whether it's Netflix or uh, DirecTV or ABC from that standpoint. But one of the things that we started doing with, with Apple Music is we saw there was an opportunity to do some new and creative things that haven't been done before. And uh, certainly the Drake video that you mentioned, we did a, a mini film with Drake where he took about a 30 minute sort of Hollywood title and took seven of his songs and created that. In the case of Planet of the Apps, it's, it's just a great story that I think people want to know more about. Uh, what does it take to be an app developer? Who are they? Um, and so there's, there's a lot to, to tell there. But I understand why you helped Drake make a video. He, he's on Apple Music. He's a musician. I, help, I understand why you do deals with Taylor Swift on Apple Music, musician. Why, why work with Ben and make a television show? What's the connection to Apple Music? Well, we, look, we, we think that people, videos can be a very important part of Apple Music. We think it's, it's a... It's one of the differentiating factors that we can add to Apple Music. Uh, in the case of Ben, Ben and I have a long history. We didn't go to college together like your wife, but, <laughs> but, uh, but him and I uh, worked together back in the iTunes days with The Office. And so it was somebody that I had a great deal of respect for and knew does incredible work. And so the opportunity to do that and bring it to Apple Music, we think is, is, is you know, the customers are going to love it. So Ben, where did this come from? Did you, did you go to Eddie and say, I want to make a television show for Apple, for um, Apple Music? Will I Am, my partner Howard Owens and I were working on the show and were taking the show out uh, to pitch it. You've got a production company, you want to make television shows and put them on TV. It, it is a core thesis of our, of our business and um, it, 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 <laughs> need, it needs the audience to also watch them to, to continue to be in that business. But, the, um, but we were developing the show, creating the show, and fine-tuning it, and we took it out to pitch the traditional players and platforms, and actually really were focused on broadcast because we thought it was a, is a, a big show. And had a lot this, of, is, this was a television show that you would put on television. On television, and we were in the process and had actually, we had one day of meetings, and all of the people we pitched to wanted the show after the first day, and Will said, listen, because we did so well today, I have to go up and do a meeting with uh, Jimmy and Jimmy Iovine and, and Eddie tomorrow up at Apple about, um, about something that he was working on, I think, related to uh, Beats and then Apple Music. And, and are you guys cool if I bring up the idea? And I think it was more like Jimmy or Eddie asked Will in the meeting, what else are you working on? What are you doing? And Will laid out the concept, and they immediately connected to it. And we actually, Will called us. We decided to um, slow down our process in LA and went and flew up and sat with the team. And what Jimmy said to me also when you asked that 
question very specifically was like, I want to make culture. This, this can be about culture. This, this can be pop culture. And that's where I want to live with what we're doing on the, the service and the music platform. And they leaned in and immediately uh, began a process of working through how we would make the show for them and what would the show be? Because you asked that question, you keep talking about like, is it TV or not TV? And uh, you know, it's obviously going to have a linear um, representation as a episodic television show. And I'll, that means and we'll, you'll show it once a week. You're not gonna, you're not gonna Netflix it. Exactly. Finish this thing. Exa that's, that's right. And, but what it is also going to be is an app, which is really meta and cool and circular, but also the dimensionality of what the show itself can be in living in three dimensions. What do you mean it's an app? I watch so, it on a. App? So one of our producers, in conjunction with the Apple team, talked about this idea of kind of how do you take all this incredible content and this deep. Uh, educational immersive experience we have within the show and go into different elements of it for longer and have parts of this show be controlled by the consumer watching it, not just in its linear representation. And one of our guys talked about this idea of rubber banding, where you can watch an actual show and press pause and go as deep or as far as you want along the rubber band. And, and in this case, the material that you're interested in, a developer, a ve the venture capital um, Wait, partner. I didn't, I didn't want to get this granular right away, but just so I understand, yeah. am I going to watch the show on the Apple Music app? Do I watch it on the Apple Watch app? Do I have to watch it on the, on the Planet of the Apps Defer app? Defer to my partner. <laughs> All of the above? I think we should play the clip. Yeah, that no, would no, help. No, no, we're, walk we're working up to the clip. <laughs> no, we'll the, get the, clip the clip even it. answers that, but yep. the, you, can yeah. watch it, you can watch it on all your devices. Um, whether it's Apple TV, uh, a Mac or PC, or obviously an iPhone or an iPad. And it'll have a linear component so as, as you would typically watch, but as, as Ben said, we wanted, to, there's a lot of things that we shoot that don't end up on air in a linear format. And if you wanna go deeper on a developer or a particular thing that's happening, we can do that. So before we get to the clip, because we're gonna show you a clip, it's a world premiere, <laughs> you can watch it. Um, um, when you guys start thinking, oh, we were going to sell this to Fox or CBS or whomever, now we're going to go to Apple. What, what do you weigh? There's pros and cons, right? I mean, Apple Music has 20 million subscribers. I'm sure you can, uh, you'll, I'm sure the number will increase between now and when you debut it, but that's smaller than the universe that watches, potentially can watch a show on Fox. Do well, you, the, the, that? the first part of it was in our day of meetings on the Monday, one of the things that Howard, Will, and I looked at each other as we would get all this interest is we'd walk out the door and go, can we even do this show without Apple? To ourselves, it was, we were pitching the broadcasters because we were viewing and that part of the way the prize would work would be somehow being in a preferred position within, uh, within the apps-enabled Apple ecosystem. And we kept coming back to that just during this initial meeting. And then when we sat with Apple directly and there was act, real interest in the content but also what they could do to help us co-produce and amplify the hyper-legitimacy of the show and the way we wanted to do it in a, in a more organic and truthful way than just like a traditional game show would be. Um, it became obvious to us immediately they kind of were the only partner. So it wasn't just about, oh, will the scale of the audience on a broadcast network be broader than the scale of an audience on Apple Music because we were inside how does the show live at its fullest potential. And then with Apple, the, the volume of, the potential audience is as many screens as exists. Um, and so that was something so also you don't think really- You don't think practically you're losing an audience by confining it to Apple? Not, no, I think that potentially we have an infinite audience because we're not gonna just be confined to the one time that the show drops. So you can, versus fighting over uh, yeah. the value of a C3, an L7, or the various ratings measurements. And the reason ratings matter, TV. right, is, is for advertisers. Are there ads in this thing? There no. no. Ads. It's, it's an ad for Apple, broadly. No. No, well, I don't know. I think it's, it's an ad for developers yeah, on for our platform. Technology. Argument, but, uh, and, and what it can do, but there, there are no ads in it. And I think, by the way, 20 million is a, uh, much larger than most shows or any TV show gets. So I think the audience is plenty big enough uh, around it. So we, we, we think we've, we've got a great audience. It's a worldwide audience is the other piece. So this will be available in most countries in the world, uh, not just in the US. 
Um, and so it's a world show. Before we show the clip, when, when will people be able to see this? We'll see it in the, in the spring. Spring of this year. So let's see it. Can we show the preview now? Ed, Absolutely. Ed? Okay. Yeah. Let's watch the preview. <laughs> Welcome to Planet of the Apps. In every episode, app developers work to earn millions of dollars in venture capital investment. It begins with the pitch to four of the world's most culturally influential entrepreneurs. Will I am. Developers, they're the rock stars of right now. Jessica Alba. I have that gut and that intuition, and so far, it's been right. Gary Vaynerchuk. You've actually completely sold me on the tech advantage. And Gwyneth Paltrow. As consumers of news, we have a real trust issue. The developers have just 60 seconds on the escalator to get one of our advisors interested in their idea. Are you ready to pitch? Are you excited? I'm so excited. Everything we've done all comes down to this. And we're the eBay for the Snapchat generation. We are going to revolutionize social media. Please explain that. Some will be denied. I see the person that can design it, but who's going to build the business? Those selected by an advisor partner with the best in the business. Olivia knows through AI the best day and time to buy groceries. I need this. This is a branding game. I'm the branding person for you. Really? Yes, really. Last time I know, my brand is known all over the earth. I'm going to go with Will. Because I got gold shoes on. That's what's up. <laughs> now work with their advisors. You guys got a lot of work to do. This isn't the pitch anymore. This is real life. And tech luminaries from companies like Yelp, Musical.ly, and Uber. Make pivots that kind of make sense to that user base you have right now. It all leads to a final pitch with one of the hottest venture capital firms on the planet, Lightspeed Venture Partners. Are you nervous? There's $10 million at stake. What's your burn rate right now? How you're planning to acquire customers. It's just not big enough. I truly believe in this. There's a big opportunity here. <gasps> oh my god, I'm crying. Successful apps earn featured placement on the App Store, making their apps available to millions of people. This is the biggest opportunity in my life. Planet of the Apps. Watch the journey unfold on Apple Music. Thank you for letting us watch that. Did you did you guys catch that? There's there's a not an elevator pitch, an escalator, escalator. pitch. Much easier so they, to film. They literally come down the escalator and they have, to, they have to finish the pitch before they hit the they ground? They go through, so the, the, the show, as you could see, as we kind of wanted to spell it out a little bit um, for the audience here, is it opens with them coming in to pitch to try and get one of these entrepreneurs to partner up with them to then take them through an incubator that's, as, process. That's the escalator as they go and down. So they go down the escalator, then they get swiped left or right to go up into a deeper presentation. So do, did you catch their attention enough to then go through your full presentation? So most of them will have an option to, to you know, get swiped so that there's enough interest to hear more and then go through the presentation. And what happens if they don't make it? Do they have to go back up the escalator or the trap there. door? <laughs> through the magic of television. No, we, uh, you know, they, they, they do not proceed into the show and, and their, their moment in the sun is gone. But what, um, what is incredible is like an example of what the partnership developed, even watching the moment, and you can't see it here, the moment that you swipe and you go to this big screen, you're reminded that apps like music, like television, like film, are a dominant part of our current cultural landscape. And when you see it, you realize what, obviously, screen-enabled storytelling apps themselves are. To talk through how the app works, to see what the app um, is, as demonstrated, can do, is really a spellbounding moment for us because it's the moment you go, oh, this show works, because you, you actually see it. Then they partner up, yeah. and then, in that partner process, and sometimes all four of them wanted somebody, or one or two of them wanted, and then it becomes your choice uh, to choose as a developer which of these um, entrepreneurs do you want to partner with. And then it gets incubated, and basically we brought in through the natural organic partnerships and relationships that these unbelievable business people had and marketing mavens, they then brought in people to support or connect or give advice and help further challenge the developers to and the do winner the best gets what? You get a featured spot? No, the, they or? then go, it's, it's not a winner, you're playing to get funded. So then you go for the final round, and an amazing part of this was how diverse 
our um, pool of people was because this process was so inherently democratic and was open to the whole world and not just the group who maybe goes to the conferences and lives in Silicon Valley or Silicon Beach or, or New York. Um, Silicon Beach is good, conferences are good. Uh, but, but yeah, you like all that. <laughs> but, but these are people from all over the world and from all over the country and it was a very diverse but, crowd so, because they just hadn't So they, the winners them. get investment and then the eventually that so, app ends up in so the So then the, they go through the incubator period and then the, the big moment is when they go in front of Lightspeed and that they are presenting with their partner the, the full agenda and deck to get potential funding from our partners at Lightspeed. And not only did it exceed our expectation, but as the Lightspeed um, team can tell you, they ended up investing even more than they thought they would. They were. said they announced 10 million and they put more than that in. And, and even more um, is, gets uh, funded through the... Through they're, the they're in here, we can, we can fact check that Exactly. <laughs> Apps have been around since 2008, right, Eddie? Do I have the timeline right? Um, these kind of reality shows, Voice, Shark Tank, where you, people get to How do things. How about mine, Biggest Loser? Biggest Fashion Loser, <laughs> but um, um, you had a former life as an NBC executive, and before that you were an agent, you brought uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire over, you know, exactly. TV. How come mm -hmm. no one has made a show about apps until now? It seems like there should be, there's a good reason they haven't made an app reality show. <laughs> And what's that? I don't know. You would think someone would have tried it by now. Well, in a world where I am constantly pitching good ideas that get rejected, timing is always important. And secondly, I think the promise of being able to real time play with the prize, unlike other shows, business shows. I did a show called Fashion Star, which actually connected to this to me, where we had different, um, we had H&M, Saks Fifth Avenue, and Macy's bidding on clothing, so a little bit like uh, Project Runway, but where the clothes were then available that night, but you had no payoff. You couldn't, as an audience, put the clothes on that night. You couldn't access the clothes that night. You couldn't go to the store that night. And the idea that you can actually connect to the prize on the show, connect to the product immediately, is a big, big, uh, Game changer. Also, I would argue, as someone who speaks to a larger audience through my content, the app world may be only uh, eight years, seven years old, eight years old, but where it has gotten into its mainstream adoption is transformed. It is now no longer just nope. the, le the leading, bleeding edge of it, it is also um, generationally gone older as well, and I think that's where this moment in time, it was around the 50th dinner party conversation where it was talking about new apps with people at the dinner table and not just new TV shows that really reaffirmed this is, this is culture now. So Eddie, when you sat down and I asked you why you're making TV, you immediately said we're, we're partnering with Netflix and DirecTV, um, right? You're saying we're, we're not competing with them. You didn't say that part out loud, but a lot of people here are expecting you eventually to keep ramping up and ramping up and, and you made videos and now you've made a couple television shows. Um, what's the trajectory look like for you guys creating shows, movies, more and more content? Look, we're, we're just starting out. Um, we're excited. We think that these shows bring something to customers that haven't been seen before. So there's something unique, special that we're bringing to the table. And I think there are more ideas like that that we have. So we hope to continue doing more. Um, and we'll see. Why edge into it like this? Why not? You spent $3 billion on Beats. It's a headphone company and, and, and some talented executives. Why not, why not make a big splash and buy a studio, buy a Time Warner, buy a Netflix, do something really big at scale? Is this, is this you learning how TV works? I would think you'd know of it by, by, by this point. We, we, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we know a few things. We, we've, as you said, we, we know those guys. Um, look, uh, for us, it's about doing, we're trying to do things that are unique and cultural, as, as he said. We think we have a real opportunity in the TV space to do that with Apple Music and shows. And we don't see that the things that we're trying to do aren't being done by anybody else. And so that's, the, that's what we're bringing to the table. That's what we'd like to do. So yes, to the extent if we wanted to do what everybody else is doing, then you're right. You might be better off buying somebody or doing that, but that's not what we're trying to, to do. We are trying to do something that's unique, uh, that takes advantage of our platforms, um, and that really brings culture to it. And uh, that's, 
Right now, we think we can do that with partners like Ben, and we don't see that anywhere else. Let me ask you a bit about Apple Music. You're about a year and a half, You're coming up on two years after launch. You've said 20 million subs. When you guys were out talking about it initially, you said you wanted to get to 100 million quickly. Has it gone as fast as you wanted? I think for the first, it's been 15 months since we've actually converted. We gave away three months. We've been yeah. live about 18 months, and we're well past 20 million. We haven't announced the latest number, but uh, we're, we're thrilled with it. Uh, it's the fastest growing sub subscription service we know of, whether it's video, music, or anywise in its first 15 months. Um, so we think we're, we're great. I still agree, and, and by the way, if you look, the world today has less than 100 million people subscribing to, to music. Um, and there's billions of people listening to music. So we still think the potential for growth is, is exponential. So no, we're not satisfied and we want a lot more. What's gonna, what's gonna make that growth, what's gonna accelerate that growth? Is it promotional stuff like this television Planet show? of the apps. No, yeah. uh, <laughs> no we, look, I, I think there's, there's lots of different things. We, we, you know, we've done this through radio, uh, features that we've added, the, the playlisting, the human curation, all of those things have mattered to take us, but you've got to keep innovating, you've got to keep adding new things to it, and, and this is a part of it, and we've got a few more things that we'll be doing this year with you. It. You guys have done exclusive, that's one of the things that you've done, you've, you've, you've gotten Drake exclusively for these windows, uh, you've done other deals like that. The Grammys last night, the two big albums were, were Lemonade and Adele's 25, Adele kept 25 off all the streaming services for a while, it's available now. Uh, Lemonade, you still can't stream on Apple or anywhere but Tidal. Um, what does that mean for either, well, for you guys and for the music business where people are divvying up albums and saying this is available here but not here, or it's only available at uh, this format for this amount of time? In general, look, I, I think the exclusives are promotions. The world has always had promotions, and I think it will continue to do that. Uh, our promotions with Drake have been great because we've done some things together like the movie, like music videos, other things that are unique that by us working with him together from the very beginning of what he's working on, we're able to do unique things. Um, one, one you didn't mention last night was, and I think uh, certainly the, the big surprise uh, was Chance the Rapper. Uh, Chance the Rapper is an independent, uh, never signed with a, with a label. Uh, we were the first to put him up sort of in the mainstream of Apple Music and became you know, the, the hottest new, new artist in the world right now. Uh, and again, we did that by working with him very, very early on, on the projects that he was working to bring those to Apple Music. I think that's a good thing for artists. And uh, now Chance the Rapper is everywhere and is huge. So you said exclusives are, are, are an old idea in music, but generally, right, in the old days, you'd hear a song on the radio and you'd go buy the album, wherever that existed. We're in a really different era now. Do you think that but asking a consumer to say, oh, well, You've got to decide if you want Spotify or Tidal or Apple and figure out who's on which, on which label is, is a good thing for the music business? I, look, there's... That's a loaded question. Yeah, thanks. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't catch that. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it's great for the music business for there to be competition and for subscription to grow. That's what's great for the music business, and, and that's what we're doing, um, ourselves and others. And there are ways to do that, and we will try different ways. Ultimately, it's never good for the music industry if it was separated on a long-term basis. But on a promotional basis, on, a, on acts that we're doing unique and exclusive things or others are doing unique things, I think that's great for music. No big deal, as the kids say. NBD. I've read that on the internet. <laughs> um, ben, what did you learn working? What, what does Apple do differently about you? have got a long history in TV. What is, what is, how is working with Apple making a television show different than doing a show with NBC or Fox? Well, get, getting into the process took a lot longer because it was new. And so there was a lot of you know, process as we got inside it. But then it, once we started making the show, it was incredibly liberating because they were a real partner in the process. And they have been amazing and involved and creative and fantastic. And whether it's small things like, how do we amplify, to your question, the storytelling around the technology because our business is always the story around the people. And so ways we could dimensionalize the screen and ways we could literally just bring that, that know-how to the process. And then throughout, they've been incredibly supportive. Never been asked to co-keynote uh, Recode before, so I give all that to, uh, to Eddie and Apple. But it's, so that's it's, worth something. It's been very... <laughs> it's been... Um, it's been super exciting and 
the system of current uh, media conglomerates, the oligopoly that controls the traditional media platform, is a little nervous, a little scared, and super anxious about buying new ideas and super anxious about, um, about which direction it, it should go. And you feel that as a creative partner of theirs. And here, it's nice to be with someone who is looking at this, this platform there, were, in a different way and, there, and supportive and excited about it, like Eddie said. Were there idiosyncrasies about television production and, and the way things are done that you had to explain to Apple and they were scratching their heads and say, why do, you, why do you do it this way? Um, of course, there's always a learning, a learning process. What was, and it, what was something early on? There's stuff around how the delivery will work of the physical episodes and things just around the, the physical technological like how are you element. literally going to get that episode to Apple and how are they going to Exactly, it? and how early do you have to get it and how does it need to be served up and where will it be served up and, you know, you know stuff inside the kind of guts of, of production. And then, um, but otherwise, they're incredibly supportive of the creative process. Jimmy Iovine has enabled and empowered more brilliant storytellers and musicians than you know probably any single person in the history of the music business. Are you getting notes from these guys? Um, no, and he and he lets his people do their thing, you know, and he is incredibly good at uh, and enabling us and empowering us, and uh, and the whole team has been a, a really great partnership. And also for us, we're really excited because a show about apps doesn't work unless you're partnered with Apple. And we may have been able to get every traditional network invested, but we didn't have a prize. And you can't do American Idol without uh, Sony BMG giving the recording contrast, contract. And you can't do things like that. And then driving how, how the actual developers got excited to come to do this show because we were partnered with Apple was you, amazing. You, you have to remember, look, it is new for us and, and we hadn't done anything quite like this before, but we bet on people. Um, and, and Ben was someone that we got to know, so this wasn't the first time that we met if each other. If you remember The Office, so I, I produced a show called The Office, and we, Apple, literally helped that show get traction. The first series of the show, no one was watching it, and then we put it up on iTunes, and it started to get sampled and sampled, and we went into reruns. Remember old reruns during the course of the summer, but we only had six episodes, and Eddie, got behind the show and helped promote it as they were launching the store and launching the iTunes store, the physical store. And our show literally got sampled be because of Apple's relationship. And then we did a Yankee Swap episode where there was an iPad in it, and we started to, uh, so you, to, to, to play with integrations and became a partner of the show. So what that does is what I mean by that is that, so it's somebody we know, we trust, we know has the utmost quality in the stuff that he does. And so it was yep. easy for us to partner because, and, and to let him do his thing. We know what we don't know. Uh, so at it, one of these panels And we probably, fall, when I would add, I don't think Gwyneth or Jessica would have ever done a show if it wasn't for Apple being our partner. So the talent attraction element of the Apple ecosystem, probably like Drake, like others, yeah. was really profound also. So at an industry trade show, is the, is the way they say these things, uh, last <laughs> fall, uh, or an industry event, um, someone said, would you do Game of Thrones if, if Game of Thrones was available? Um, are you, are, do you have that kind of ambition for this stuff? If, if the team behind Game of Thrones, if someone with that lineage and pedigree says, this is the new thing we want to make, it's $100 million, it's dwarfs and dragons and naked ladies, <laughs> Do you make it? <laughs> I, I think I'll answer it the same way. Knowing what I know now, I'd be an idiot if I didn't make it. Yeah. Uh, since it is my one, one of my favorite shows and many others. Uh, but again, we're, we're not we're not taking the traditional route. Um, this is a show that that's unlike uh, anything that we see out there that we are able to add value to. Carpool karaoke is in the same vein. So yep. and so the ideas that we're doing are things that. We, we do think we add certain value to it. It's not just that we're going off the shelf and, and buying shows. But, but people are coming to you, right? I mean, the Amazon bought uh, the Grand Tour, which used to be the, the BBC uh, Top Gear show. You're a car guy. That show must have come to you at some point, right, before Amazon got to it? I, I, despite the rumors and, and comments that were made, it wasn't a show that I looked at or whatever no. to buy. It wasn't, we, we weren't doing that. So you, uh, you're not, stuff is not coming to your desk and you're... Well, that's not to say that... <laughs> There's lots of things that come to our desk all the time. People, my email's pretty uh, common and uh, everyone knows what it is or easy to find. 
Uh, and so we get a lot of things that come to us, but again, that's not, we're not out trying to buy a bunch of shows. We're trying to do some things that are creative, that can, we think can move culture, and that Apple is adding some value to. And uh, we'll see. I think these first two shows that we have, uh, I'm excited about. I think they, they wouldn't be as good if we weren't involved. Um, and so therefore, now I start thinking, yeah, then it makes sense for us to do this. So this, you're warming up. There's going to be more of this. Well, we hope so. If we're, if we're, if we're good at it together, we'll see. Good. Uh, um, ben, like you, you said, you mentioned The Office. That was a British show that you were doing in the U.S. You, you made your name by bringing in Who Wants to Be a Millionaire to the U.S. Um, this is the kind of show that normally, if it's successful, you'd go do 20 versions of across the, the world, and that's where you actually make a ton of money. Um, that doesn't happen this time around, right? This is a one-off. It's global. Well, I think all, I think everything's open. You know, I think who, who owns the rights to the show? Is this your show? Is this Apple's show? We, it's a, we're partners. We're partners uh, in doing this, and you know, who knows where it goes. Uh, we didn't limit it to U.S. developers. It's any developer around the world, and. Um, you know, we'll see where it goes. We think there's plenty of developers out there. To me, you know, what, what I'm excited about this is, this is the American dream. It is individuals, it's not large companies, that have the opportunity to really change the world and do that as individuals. It's hard to do that. Apps provide that. And I think a lot of people, you know, have ideas, and, and this shows you that whole progress of, you know, when you come up with an idea, how does it get made? What's the process that goes along, and and how you can potentially make it make it big? When when apps when the App Store opened up 2008, you could literally anyone could sort of be successful at the App Store. One of my favorite stories is these two Croatian brothers in Chelsea in New York who made Doodle Jump, and they made millions of dollars on this really simple game. Um, and it seems like over the years, the the App Store has increasingly sort of calcified, bigger bigger developers, bigger names. Um, there's still a handful of indie breakouts. Is that something that's important for you to like continue to shake up and bring in people who don't have backing? Well, I, I think, look, the competition, like anything, when there's so many apps, the competition raises the quality. So in order to stand out today, you have to be really, really good. Uh, now, we still have, if you go look at our top 100 apps, a lot of individual small team of developers that are sitting in there today and new apps. So it's by no means uh, only the big guys. And the funny thing is, uh, if you look at our the biggest developers on the App Store today making, they weren't the big developers, they've become big. They started actually very very small. You, you guys added search ads to the App Store? We did. Your, how has that affected rankings and what I see? Uh, we, we, the early results is we're seeing more downloads of apps, uh, which is great. Uh, which is so you think we, it's a direct connection between the average? We, we do. We see it when we can measure it when there's an ad and when there's not an ad, and we, we get more downloads. So we think it's been an effective way to help people discover ads. Uh, sorry, discover apps. <laughs> you guys don't love ads, though. Yeah, it's we're not advertising. You're not av you're not fans yeah, of ads. We're not. Again, we're think of the context, the context in which you're in. You're actually searching for an app, and so if there's a way that an advertiser can help in, in providing that in a better way, that's what we're doing. Uh, we're not advertising, you know, Coca-Cola or drink a Coke. Uh, we're advertising the fact that you search for travel yep. and we're putting a travel app on there. This, so this is your first big show you're doing. It doesn't have ads. Do you think as you create more content that will have advertising in or do you think this will be an ad-free experience? I don't know. What I will tell you though is I don't know many people watching ads on television today. Uh, I don't watch them because I either watch uh, on, on shows direct off of iTunes or other services or I skip ads on my DVR and when I ask my 50, when I look at my 15 year old daughter or my two sons that are 23 and 25, I don't see them watching ads on television other than live sports or live news. And so I'm not sure, I'm not saying we'll never do it, but I don't see that that's the direction we should be going. I don't think that's what our customers are asking from us. So there's a lot of people in this audience that make their living, they're able to afford com to come to this conference because they buy, sell, create ads. The company I work for is an ad advertising supported. What happens to advertising? I, I think they'll be innovative and do new things with advertising. It won't go away. Advertising's not gonna go away. There's a lot of money, uh, but there's different ways to do it. I think the advertising that we see today that you were talking about specifically is adding you know, three minute spots into the middle of the show. Um, I don't see that as the future. I don't, I, don't, I don't think that's what my kids want to watch. 
Now that doesn't mean that you can't do advertising in those shows or that you have to do it a different way, but you gotta, they'll have to innovate. So you guys have spent many, many years talking to television networks, pay TV providers, about creating your own version of a pay TV service. Um, when, when you're envisioning what the future of TV looks like and something that Apple might deliver, is that an ad-based business or, or do you imagine someone pays to get an Apple TV service and they don't watch ads? Look, I think what we all can agree to today is that the television business is changing and will be changing rapidly over the next few years. If you look today, the content has never been better. There's better content today than ever. We can watch live sports of any game. You can watch live news occurring around the world. You look at the TV shows that are available, they're Hollywood theatrical movie quality. We can do innovative things like we're talking about today on the content side. Yet, and your TV screen is amazing. It costs $1,000 for 60 inches. I've got an iPhone with me that can stream live in HD. I've got an iPad. So it's amazing, yet here we are talking, and I don't think anyone's projecting that your satellite and cable subscription business is going to grow. I hear a lot about cord cutting. I hear a lot about the skinny bundle. So you hear about all these things that are decreasing. Well, why is that if the content is better? And so I think there's just a lot of opportunity for change uh, happening in this space. How it gets developed, we'll see. I think uh, I, I'm sure that you will continue to see lots of advertising. It's a great way to fund and make things available for free. So it's not all or nothing, but I do think that just if you take the platform as it exists today, it's going to change. So when you are talking to the people in the TV ecosystem of what you want to do, where is the roadblock for you? Is it, is it the programmers? Is it the, the Comcast of the world, the pay TV providers? What's preventing you from delivering the thing that you want to deliver? Well, look, we, we, we are... The problem you have today is, is how do you access all of this content? So there's a lot of content, you know, one of my favorite lines that I hear a lot is you sit in front of your TV and people will say, I got like 900 channels and nothing to watch. Um, and the truth is a lot of that is about discovery. Um, it's about the fact that what's playing now may not be exactly what you want to watch now. Um, those are all problems that I think technology can solve readily. And so what we're doing is working with the content guys, not it's to get the, the stuff they're creating, which we think is amazing and great, yep. and make it more accessible so that more people are watching it. But, but the tech problem, if it was just a tech problem, you guys would be selling your version of the TV service you want. And it's not just a tech problem, right? There's, there's, there's structures about the way that the economics of, of TV work. So where, where is the thing, what, what is the, the wall that you run into when you want There's, to do this? We, we, every time we, you try to, any, any time there's change, um, there's always some resistance. There's also the fact that you have lots of parties involved and everybody doesn't want to move in the same direction. Yeah, I want you to name a name. Who's, and who's, so who's, you, who's, who's got causing a, problems you, you? There, there's not a problem. It's just somebody might want to go left, you want, somebody else wants to go right. And the customer, you can't do that to the customer. And so for us, for example, what we're trying to do is make it really easy for them to discover, which is why we did the TV app. So there's a central place that people yep. can look at things. And so, so we work with the content providers. We work with the distributors of content. Um, there's also a bunch of rules that they have, um, for example, around DVRs and other things that, that exist today. And, and some of those things, if you want to move forward, have to change, and it takes some time. We did this with, you know, we did this with music. Right. We did it with movies, um, and so it takes time to do that. So you guys launched the iTunes Store and, and singles, 2003. Did I have my history right? Close uh, for singles, yeah. Singles, right? So you got you got the music industry to agree to take a $15 CD and chop it up into $1 singles, um, and they did that because Napster had showed up four years later and, and blown up the business. They were they were in free fall. Um, and, they, and the music guys agreed to work with you because they were already seeing their business go away. Do you think the TV guys need to be in a similar position for you to get what you want? Do they need to be in, just sort of decimated for them to let's, give you the, the terms you need? No, look, uh, the TV's, it's not getting decimated, so let's not, let's not exaggerate uh, this, this problem. A little drama. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they're doing well. I just would like to... Uh, Ben's getting nervous. Give, given the content, given the content, how great it is, I think there's people are, should be watching more of it and would be willing to pay more. So when I hear about all these other things that are about reducing, uh, that I don't understand. This skinny bundle, that's, that's the new conventional wisdom that if you let people pay 50 instead of 60 bucks or 30 bucks instead of 40 bucks, they'll be more willing to pay for TV. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how that, that's great, um, but you know.
leave it to others. From our viewpoint, we think the content's great and we want to make more of it accessible to you all the time and so that it's easy to find, easy to watch, uh, and the ways you want to watch it. And, uh, you know, nothing is easy. People, you know, you talk about music. It took the first time, nobody really knows this, the first time we went to the music guys to do the iTunes store, uh, we worked with them for about three or four months and after three or four months, they told us to go away. And we came back a year later and then it took us about eight months to get those deals done. Change takes time from that. Uh, and, uh, and you're seeing some of it already. Um, you can now watch, you know, lots of things on Watch ESPN. You can watch live games all the time. That's, you know, so things are already moving and progressing. It's not like it's a standstill. Do we like, would we like it to go faster? Of course we would. We're, we're watching a, a consolidation happen where a distributor like AT&T is buying Time Warner. Um, so everyone thinks, all right, we've, now we're marrying content and, and distribution again. Um, you guys have, are basically a giant distribution channel through iTunes. Does it make sense for you to own a lot of content yourself? <laughs> so good, right? Yeah, <laughs> a subtle way. Uh, <laughs> look, we're, we're not again. We, we are happy doing the things that we're doing today. Uh, we're very good at technology. We're good at solving a lot of these problems. Uh, we are doing some innovative things, hopefully in the in the video space, and we'll see where that takes us. I thought if I just kept asking you, you'd eventually give me a different answer, but <laughs> it doesn't always work. A um, couple couple quick questions. Um, I'm, I'm podcasting now. Part of my job is podcasting. Um, Vox Media is taking podcasting seriously. A bunch of people are. You guys created podcasting. That's why it's called podcasting. Um, and there are a lot of people who want you to help the podcast business grow faster. I ran, literally ran into one of them who created, uh, from Gimlet Media, created Serial. Um, and they want you to help grow it faster. They want you to spend more time, devote more resources. They want data. There's almost no data that comes out of iTunes and most of the, the consumption happens on but They're iTunes. letting you guys keep all the profits and we've been, I know we've successfully been able to license uh, a couple of podcasts recently, including Lore, if you're a podcast fan from Aaron. I didn't realize there were profits yet. I, they no, just but the meaning data. that, well, <laughs> well, listening, but the guy who owns Lore owns 100% of Lore. And so, and, he, and we found it through Apple, we discovered it through Apple, and we were able to license and work out the relationship directly with Aaron Menke, who owns, owns Lore, and that environment that you created um, flourished and, you know, planted flowers that now those people are able to reap the benefit of themselves. Look, I think there's a huge resurgence in podcasting, um, and... Uh, it's exactly what customers want because it's, it's the ability of, of listening to something on demand when you want. Yep. Um, and that's exactly what it's about. And uh, should we, can we do more and, and will we do more? Absolutely. The, the ask, by the uh, way, the, the Gimlet guy wrote me a very long and passionate email, boil it down to this. He said, can you at least give us the same deal you give us the magazine publishers, which is let me at least contact who's, let me at least know who's consuming my stuff, let me have direct contact with them and have some sense of, of what they're actually consuming. Can you, so, can you give them that? Uh, we're working on new features for podcasts and uh, stay tuned. All right, well stay tuned. What's um, the name of your podcast? It's Recode Media with Peter Kafka. <laughs> of course you knew. Of course you knew. And you'll be able to listen to all this. I can't for free. He owns 100 No, he owns, he owns 100%, zero. So he owns yeah. zero. Bank yeah. officer. I'll call Walt. <laughs> um, Walt cannot cut that deal. Um, um, in everyone in your swag bag, if you haven't picked it up yet, there is a, a Amazon Dot, um, which we bought for you. So you're welcome. Um, um, Amazon it's surprised people with, with the success of the Alexa service, and this seemed like the kind of thing that Apple would have delivered a few years ago. Um, what have you learned watching them get into this business successfully? Uh, again, we, look, we think voice is a, a huge part of the future of user interfaces. Uh, it's why we did Siri, it's why we continue to evolve it. Uh, we, you know, it's great in cars with CarPlay where you need to use voice. Uh, it's faster to do things like whether it's setting your alarm clock or finding data or finding when your next calendar event is or calling somebody. Um, and those are all things that are great on your device that you carry with you all the time. And so we've continued to see Siri usage spike and go further and further up. Uh, and so we're not surprised that, that people like a voice interface. And so we're going to continue to evolve that. Um, one other Amazon question. When I want to watch an Amazon show on my, my, my Apple TV, um, I, I airplay it from my phone. Works pretty well, but it's still clunky. Yep. Um, when, can I, when can I watch an Amazon show via an Amazon app on Apple TV? 
absolutely. I guess I'm not the only one. We have, as the great, the great thing is uh, we have a completely open platform to any developer uh, to do that, so they can do it anytime they like. And, and honestly, um, I, I know Amazon and Jeff and some of the team, and I hope that, uh, that they will join sometime soon. Sometime soon? I said I hope they join sometime soon. Soon sounds good. I'll take that. Um, like you said, we're doing <laughs> two, you guys are doing two shows. Yes. Um, so let's bring on one of the producers of the other show. Ben Winston, come on. Come on, Ben. Sorry, I kept you waiting here. Hi. Hi. Ben, here, stand for a second sure. before we sit. So Ben produces the Late Late Show. I do. James Corden. Um, you also took on a, a, another gig. You were busy last night producing the Grammys. I did. I produced the Grammys last night, yeah. So you need a rest. Y yes. No, I don't. I, I, I want right. to be here. Be before, be, we'll, we'll, we'll give you a break in a minute, but um, tell us about Carpool Karaoke and, and why you're making that show with Apple. Okay. Uh, should I sit? Or no, I stand. We'll stand? talk, okay, we'll talk quickly. I don't want you to get uh, comfortable. Let, let him sit. He's tired. I mean, geez. Yeah, but then he's got to sit on, his, <laughs> sit on my lap. It's a four-hour journey The here, quicker you talk, then the sooner you can sit night. down. Okay. Uh, <laughs> in essence, carpool is something that um, we started on the Late Late Show. We didn't necessarily expect it was going to be the success it was. Um, and it took us by surprise, really. But we realized there was something quite beautiful and intimate about two people sitting in a car. Uh, talking to each other and you'd get things out of people that you wouldn't somehow get if you're in a studio or speaking like this. You put it in a car and somehow people open up a lot more. Boom, um, huge hit on YouTube, other huge platforms. Huge hit on YouTube. Uh, a big part of it was the music in it and so we wanted to make a show and we partnered with these guys and we're so pleased that we did. And so the, the difference between this and this sh the stuff that we've seen on YouTube and on, on your actual television show is James won't be in this, right? No, James is in a, an episode or two but he's... But he's busy. No, I think show. the idea of this show is that we're having different pairings every week. So our idea is that we're taking two people from different walks of life, or friends, or people who haven't met, and uh, putting them in a car together, and they go on a road trip. And uh, what we found is we're getting really entertaining half-hour episodes from people being together on, uh, in the car. I can see Eddie mouthing, show the clip, show the clip. So okay. Let's show the clip sure. and you can, you can sit. Do you mind if we listen to some music? This, this, this is Carpool Karaoke. It's getting like 350,000 views an hour. women think I'm for real sometimes. Really? We need a bigger car. No, no, I think we can make it work. This is still carpool karaoke. Car Hello? carpool karaoke. Ka This the next level. I believe I can fly. Woo! Woo! I believe I can touch the sky. <laughs> I think about it every night and day. Uh.
can do oh. now. Uh -huh. That's good. That's self-explanatory. There you go. That's, That's a complete it. video. We got yeah. no other questions. Um, so I don't need to ask you what's different about this. We we know what's different. You have different guests instead of James, but format-wise, it's the same thing. You have well, to. Well, no, have it's, it's slightly different actually. Um, firstly, I think we don't always have musicians in the car. Yeah. So I think that's one of the fun things is that we're peop seeing people who are actors or sportsmen or presenters in the car uh, with people they don't usually know, um, singing music that we love. And also they're doing a little bit more. So there's a few more stops. So Metallica and Billy Eichner was an incredible pairing in that Billy Eichner is the last person you'd expect to see with Metallica. Uh, and they go shopping and see if Metallica can motivate people while they're shopping by playing their music as loud as they could. And uh, so there's some fun stuff. And, and yeah, we're, we're, we're proud of it and pleased with it. And we're excited for everybody to see it. Eddie, when are we going to see this? Uh, we'll see this in April. April, that's an actual date. That is an Great. actual yeah. date. We're ready. Uh, awesome. So uh, very soon. And that, the sh that nice video shows there's a now a TV and movie section coming to the Apple Music app. So you need to put more stuff in there, right? You just can't have two shows. <laughs> <laughs> the Luck barren section. Luckily, we already have a few things up there yeah. that uh, can, you can continue. fill in the gaps. There, so. Isn't it about quality rather than quantity? That's right. Well, okay. Right. I have other questions, but I know you guys do as well. So let's bring up the lights to whatever lights we need so people can ask questions from this fine panel here. It's a lot bigger room. Go for it. Lights go on. Hey, Eddie, uh, you know, probably like five, six years ago, uh, Steve Jobs spoke to Walter Isaacson about television, and he said that he had cracked the code on TV. Uh, what we've seen from Apple in the Apple TV brand has really just been another box with a touch, you know, device and maybe some Siri. Uh, Apple's a platform company. And you guys tend to disrupt industries when you create a new platform like iOS or like the iPod or like Macintosh. Um, what, you know, uh, kind of piggybacking on former questions, what do you think is preventing Apple, uh, maybe not preventing, but causing you guys to choose to do something like these, uh, these new programs instead of a platform? Is it, you know, I, I understand the skinny bundle might not be that interesting, but a la carte programming is. I'm pretty sure everyone in here would rather have that than what we pay for 900 channels. So, you know, maybe you guys could just stop buying back shares for a year and actually, you know, buy a company that's a distributor of content? Or what is it that's actually keeping you guys from giving us something that is truly innovative on our television? Yeah, what he said. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, well, the, the first thing is that the, you know, We've got the, the greatest platform in the world and the one that's in your pocket all the time with iPhone. And so we are disrupting television in a huge way uh, by the fact that everyone is watching more videos uh, with them all the time. So let's, let's not be careful. Things are not very stagnant. Part of the reasons we're having all of these discussions and things are happening is there's a tremendous amount of disruption happening. Um, what you'd like to get to is the Where's the sort of final answer from that? Yeah. And these things will, will, will take some time. And there's you know, lots of legacies and lots of things, but it's changing fairly, fairly rapidly uh, today. You see that with Netflix. Uh, you see it with new programs like DirecTV Now. There's lots of new things that are being tried and I think will continue. And they're doing that on our platform based on the capabilities that are there. And so agreed, uh, there's lots of things people would like to see, competition, the ability of a platform that's open for those parties to try these new things is the key. The reason you're seeing Sling TV, DirecTV now is that the platforms exist to be able to do that. Um, and so we'll continue empowering that while we also continue to make things easier so that you don't have to go to every single app for every single show. Um, and we'll do some innovative things with, with the shows themselves. One of the opportunities of the platform, by the way, is not just you know, how much you pay or what it is, it's what it does. Um, television has always been a one-way thing. Um, one of the, the really cool things about our platform is the ability of having interactivity and doing other things with it. And you're just beginning to see those types of things. Uh, and I think that's another interesting area, whether we do an app for Planet of the Apps or, you know, ESPN does data or other things around it. I think there's a huge opportunity once you have a platform to allow these creative folks to do some cool and new things with it. Alex, I think you just teed you up here. <laughs> I guess this is a follow-up question to your answer about a TV being one way and kind of how it works today and, and what you guys are heading towards. Um, 
going back to when you guys first launched the App Store, the early apps were sort of the obvious, the New York Times and uh, EA and, and, and things like that. Would you, and, and, and now you are working with some of the world's best known television creators who pitch those same shows to a number of traditional buyers and you guys won the bid and there's a variety of things that you guys are doing that are a little different from the others, but fundamentally you're still making things that look, smell, and feel like TV. Is this the first step and the content itself is going to be eventually distinct by the fact that it's on the Apple platform? Or are you moving f more in the direction of figuring out how to adapt and, and shift TV the way you're doing with the TV app? And once Netflix is in there, it's, you know, it's going to be wonderful. Um, is, 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 what I, I guess what I'm asking is, is the tech play here around um, better discovery and better, and better sort of consumption of what already exists? Or is the goal to kind of figure out what is the next thing that doesn't exist yet that's going to exist because Apple made it happen, as, it, as happened with the App Store? Yeah, I think it's both. Um, the, the things that you watch today are things that you're going to want to continue to watch and, and great shows from that standpoint. But what you'd like to do is also have a platform that allows content creators to innovate. Um, and so you want both of those things. And so you want a content creator to have a platform that allows them to do things um, that's interactive, that may take advantage of voice, that has all of the, the technical capabilities that our platform has to offer, as opposed to being stuck just on a you know, one-way uh, approach. And so you want to do both of those things. Rich. Hi, thanks. Uh, first of all, I would just agree, podcasts, I think, are amazing in terms of the quality. I think if you look at, like, Pod Save America and what some of these new podcasts have been doing recently, uh, including Peter's and Ben Thompson, who's here tomorrow, I think it's amazing. Um, so big plug for podcasts. But focusing on video content, I, I guess, you know, you showed Carpool Karaoke. I totally understand why that fits within an Apple Music app. But how does Planet of the Apps fit within Apple Music? I mean, I know you're launching a separate app as well for it, but, like, What's the, the connective tissue of why, uh, what looks like uh, a reality TV show with the kind of Shark Tank-esque fits inside of the Apple Music app, or is it that you think that by having video content inside of a music app, it takes people away from what might be Spotify or other platforms and makes them Apple Music subs? I'm just trying to understand like yeah. where you're heading. Yeah, Apple, look, uh, for us, Apple Music um, is about culture, it moves people, um, and we think that Planet of the Apps has the opportunity to do the same thing. Um, and so in that way, it's similar. It's not about music, uh, but it has the same concepts to that. If you think of uh, MTV played a lot of music videos from that standpoint, and at some point also did shows that were not about music. Um, so it's about the culture and about moving people and getting them excited about things. And we think that Apple Music has that in its DNA, and this fits very well with that. And if I could just add on to Peter's question, because I think he asked it four different ways. I'll take a different angle on it. Um, four years ago last week was the premiere of House of Cards. Netflix had effectively no original programming. And I think it's hard to imagine how much programming they've accumulated in four years. At Code Media 9, which Peter will hopefully be on stage for, will, is it conceivable that Apple could have a portfolio of shows that looks like that? Yeah, look, I, 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 get, I get the premise. The fourth question is a good one. Everybody wants me to come up here and basically say, hey, we're going to do the same thing Netflix is and we're going to be just as big or whatever. It, it's, I, four years from now, I don't know where we're going to be uh, in relation to this. Uh, like I said, we, we're trying to do some different things. Uh, how fast it grows and where it goes to remains to be seen. When we, when we were here uh, eight years ago and we were talking about the App Store, I assure you four years later we had no idea where that would be or how it would trans transpire. What you need though is you need to solve some of the issues that I just talked about. You've got to solve issues of making things more accessible to watch so people are you know, able to get it. And you'd like to, do some, you'd like to give the content creators some ability to innovate um, so that they can do some unique things on the platform. That's what we're trying to do. We think this is a, a beginning to what we hope is a lot more content and a lot more unique things that haven't been seen before. But how much, how fast, um, that remains to be seen. Thanks. Kurt. 
Hey, uh, Kurt Wagner with Recode. Eddie, I'm curious if you could talk about your thoughts on artificial, uh, excuse me, VR and AR. Um, there's been some reports out that you guys are working on like AR glasses, like a Google Glass type thing. Facebook has said they think VR is the future, the next big platform after mobile. Uh, do you guys think of it in the same way? How do you think about virtual reality? Well, I, I, you know, for those of you that don't know, I've been at Apple uh, nearly 29 years. Um, one of the things and that tells you I love being at Apple, and, and so talking about future products would not be good, because <laughs> I certainly wouldn't be at Apple for a long time then, a lot longer at least. Um, look, we've said and we've publicly said that AR and VR has some interesting uh, aspects to it and, and technology from that standpoint, but we've, we've got really nothing to announce or, or talk about today in, in the new product space, so sorry. Lucas, don't ask about the new Apple TV. I'm not going to ask about the new Apple TV. I was going to ask a question a lot like Rich did, but I feel like he got about the best answer we're going to get out of Eddie on this subject. So I'm going to ask about the, the company that is sort of the subtext for a lot of these questions, which is Netflix. So one for Ben. You have made a lot of the most successful reality TV shows over the past 10, 15 years, as you talked about on stage. They are about to release what is one of the stranger experiments in reality television in a couple of weeks. It's the show called Ultimate Beastmaster. I'm wondering kind of whether you think it works to make six different versions of a reality show at the same time. What are your thoughts on that show? And you know, is, is that a model that can work when reality is largely a make a show and then sell it around the world to fund the rest of it model? Well, a, a couple of things. One thing that Eddie said earlier that I know is really interesting for Ben and I in our, in our world is when does the code writer and the producer get together? When does the code writer and the screenwriter get together? And the promise of these platforms to unlock our creativity is so high as we start to think about it. Because when we would get pitched in America, uh, whether I was running a network or would hear an idea, the first thing we'd have to tell our friends from England, Holland, or Australia, where many of the ideas were coming from, was, oh, no, we can't do that. We have time zones. You know, immediate, little subtle things about how the traditional broadcast network is distributed across multiple affiliates and therefore is actually owned the signal by all of these local players. And you can't hurt California by going live live, unless it's a Grammys or Oscars, is an immediate thing that, that's been a challenge and that something like um, Apple can transform and rectify, and also obviously the interactivity. But another one is the genres haven't moved. I just wanted to, it's still sitcoms, drama. Netflix is producing the most traditional shows in the history of the medium, one day at a time, Gilmore Girls. I mean, you even look at the, the content and they're doing it fantastically well. But the storytelling has not moved on, either in ter length of time, you know, it's still hours, half hours, whether they're 40 minutes or an hour long, they're still in this dramas or one way, comedies or another. So I think there's a lot that can be unlocked there. And then as it relates to doing a show with multiple versions, that has always been actually how the reality business exploded. And just like you saw in Slumdog, Slumdog Millionaire, you know, American Idol, which I helped architect to come to America, and then as it rolled out across the world, was always done locally. And our partner on that, Paul Smith from Celador, wouldn't actually let you sell the finished version of the other country, England or America or whatever, to the other market, India or, or Australia or whatever. So I think Netflix ambition, because it is global, and because it is in all these markets and can actually remake their own show locally is, is kind of brilliant. The part that's in, that is the real leap is generally you know if it works before you then go remake it everywhere around the world. But that set was so big, they're also amortizing the cost of this one set and just flying in the contestants. And that is something that has been done um, in reality television before, but never by one platform. It was always done individually. If two folks want to ask questions, we'll ask those real quick. I, I need to ask Eddie one thing before I forget. Uh, the other day, your boss, Tim Cook, said fake news is a problem. I think he said it's destroying our minds. Uh, tech should, re should respond to this and solve it, and that someone should create a PSA. Um, so I don't think you guys are going to create a PSA. So why don't you, what, what are, what, what in Apple News is part of your responsibility. So what are you guys doing about fake news and what do you think you will do? Well, look, first of all, I think since the vast majority of news is now being read 
through devices um, and, and through services that are provided through those devices, then I do think that we all have a responsibility for it. And I think that's what, what Tim talked about. It. I certainly feel that way. Uh, and so when you looked at something like Apple News where we started, um, we wanted Apple News to be available to everyone, but we want to vet and make sure that the news providers um, are legitimate. And so we try to, to do that in a way that we've been learning. It's a new process. It's sort of never been done. Tighten and, it up. And, and you want to have, you know, it's not, the, the great thing about Apple News is not, again, just about the big guys. It's also about the individuals. Um, and so you want to make that open. The Fifth Amendment is very important to us and free speech. And, and, and so those are all things that are important. But, um, you know, we're, we're, we're very concerned about, and I said, yeah, the, we're very concerned. We all, we all got it. We know, yeah, I got the, it. I got the it. Amendments. Uh, we're, we're, very, we're very concerned about the, the, the you know, all of the, the news items and the clickbaits in that standpoint. <laughs> And that getting driving a lot of the news coverage. So is there so, something you can do that you're not doing already through Apple News or some other access, or is Tim just saying someone else should fix this? No, I think I, I think we we all of us in technology and in the services own a responsibility for it. We don't have all the answers certainly by any means, um, but we need to work on it. We need to talk about it. Uh, we're trying to do some things in Apple News. Uh, we're learning from that, and we need to uh, to share that together as an industry and, and improve it. No, no PSA though. <laughs> we're nothing. N nothing, nothing to announce. Nothing no, no to announce. Products. <laughs> Very last question. Hi, I actually have two, but um, I'll make it quick. The the KPIs. I'm curious. You know, with, this is obviously a really new, exciting venture for all of you, and I'm curious from from your seats. You know, what you feel like would really determine our successful ROI and success for each of you. Um, and also, obviously, the brand partners that we saw in the, uh, the trailers and the sizzles, sizzles that we saw earlier, um, how you felt like they've really kind of helped move the needle and, and move the story forward. Let's just do the ROI thing, because I'm sure all the brand partners have been awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and it's late, people want to drink. You know, ROI is, is, is not the way we look at products. It's not the way we're looking at this. It's not, you know, it, we, we start by trying to do things that we think are great products or things that people want, and in return, those ROIs seem to solve themselves uh, one way or the other. So we didn't go looking at this from an economic point of view of trying to do the math or, or, or that standpoint. We do this as, are people enjoying this? Are they watching it? Um, and are they liking the things that we're innovating on together with it? If it does, then we do more of it. But Ben, Ben, you guys are in a different boat. You're, you're not Apple. You have, your resources are finite, so you guys do need ROI on this. Well, how do you how do you determine whether this is successful for you? Well, for me, I think that it comes down to why we partner with Apple. Apple, as far as I can remember, have always been at the forefront of anything great culturally. And for us, with Carpool specifically, it's something that's blown up that people love, that people talk about, that people share the next day. And therefore, to partner with Apple on it, I guess our temper of what success is will be that people are talking about it, engaging with it, enjoying it, um, and I think that will be the... Do you want them to come back and watch the show? Was the idea you want to eventually drive them to the, the Late Late Show? No, this don't is care. a totally separate show. This is, this is about people enjoying the experience of, of this show, and I think if it, if it becomes, if it does what the Late Late Show's carpool has done, then I think that will be a very successful thing for us. Ben, you get the last word. We just are invested in their success because we want to be, we've been a partner before and you know, it took 10 years to be back in, in partnership. So I'm just hoping what Ben and I do doesn't mean that no one else named Ben can ever come work for That's Apple. Yeah. <laughs> Deal, and we can have more Bens on stage. Ben Thompson is coming tomorrow. I'll do that plug in a second. Eddie, Ben, Ben, thank you very much. Thank you, thank Peter. You. Thanks, Peter. Thank you, thank you Eddie. Like I just said, we have Ben Thompson. We flew him in from Taiwan to come see you guys tomorrow, so please come here for that. Before that, we have breakfast content. Um, you can read about that in your app. It's awesome. Um, I'm doing some stuff.